Hi everyone, this is Manchester Gaming and I'm here to bring you another Dota Auto Chess guide. So let's get the game going and for, for the sake of copyright reasons, I'm going to mute the sound and hopefully you guys are okay with it. Let me know in the comments below if the sound is okay. And as you can see, I'm rolling for a courier right now. And we got a bounty hunter, which is really nice. It's actually my first blue courier. I haven't been getting any blue couriers or any purple couriers till now. So that's pretty strange as well. So yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna pause here. Actually, I'm gonna pause here. So right at the beginning of the game, I'm gonna show you guys something. Actually, we can't. So what happens at the beginning of the game is we locked our game for two bad writers and one X. Usually this never happens. I never lock for bad riders and I don't really lock for one X. We lock for two turns just for the bad riders. This is because purposely I want to start try a troll build. Two reasons I want to try the troll build. One is that I want to test our rolling strategies, rolling for three star units with the troll build. Second reason is I have just discovered this new troll strategy that I'll share with you guys. So I'm trying to get two things done at once. That's why I really wanted the bad riders. To start with so what are the strategies one of the strategies with the new troll build is that troll build always keep disruptor this time we're going to try to keep two ox or four ox for the troll build so we try to start with four ox or even three ox because we can't get four ox to start it off and what we try to do is we try to get the ox to get us the early and mid game so we actually survive or we actually have a good upper hand against any other players with Ox. And Ox will take us into the mid game while we find our troll. This is the first strategy. So it's basically an Ox troll build, but there's a little twist to it. The twist is we'll be rolling for three star units at level seven and level eight. And here, as you can see, I'm looking around. There's some decent players and a few of them uh, have met in Queen games. So this is one of the mid-tier rook games that I'm playing to test the builds. As you can see right now, I have not many great units and we're okay with this right now because it's only round three. What we're looking for is we're looking for chores. We're looking for ox and we got two X and one background, which is excellent. Notice that I did locking on the first round to get one X and um, two bat rider because they fit our builds, so I kept them and this actually paid off at this stage. I gave one orb of corruption of Blightstorm to the bat rider simply because I think bat rider will be doing a lot of physical damage at this point in the game. I'm gonna skip a bit and simply because I don't want to take too much time in the early game. But of course I'll I'll show you guys as I go through the rolling. So we got another top row again. This time I got a two star Shadow Shaman. Right now we know we're quite strong because round five, three two star units, and this is a really good start for the troll build test. This might even be too good of a start. I'm keeping any two stars I can find because Tusk is a warrior and will have three warriors on the board if he becomes two star. Even if one star, I might still use him. So we have two trolls, two ox, perfect stuff for us. We're facing other players simply because we have three three star unit, three two star units, we're actually winning our engagements. Let's skip a little bit. This time we've got nothing special. So notice how I'm staying on level four and I level up to level five as soon as we got to round six. This is because we want to open up the purple rates for sure and doing so would reduce our rate of getting bad riders and very soon once we get to level six the two star rates will reduce from 35 percent to 30 percent so notice how i'll be having reduced rates for bad riders shadow shaman and witch doctor which is okay and i'll also have i'll also have reduced rates for the ox but it's also acceptable because the key part of this build is troll we want to get our troll rate high and we want to have more units on the board so we are actually not losing the early game too much because what i find with most of my troll build runs sometimes we win sometimes we lose it's that we have massive swings of comebacks when we get a troll and this is not what we want to see we want a stable troll build as you can see we found another juggernaut we found another witch doctor we want to replace the queen of pain with the witch doctor simply because the stun is so great and even level one the witch doctor stuns 
pretty nicely. But I also remembered my crown paint have items, so it was a little juggling. And in the end, I decided that the three hundred, the two hundred fifty HP for the Ox synergy is not worth it. So I took the juggernaut out. So I'm gonna skip a bit. The fights are usually won because our shadow shaman got the hex off, and our witch doctor got this coconut off, which is very nice. And here. Again, another key piece of our troll run is Beastmaster. Beastmaster works really well with physical armor reduction lineup, and we'll be looking into Alchemist or Two Undead for our troll synergy. Because we want lifesteal, we want armor reduction, because most of our trolls are physical damage dealers. And we excel in terms of physical damage dealing, we don't do much magic. We excel in terms of AoE control with Disruptor and single target stuns with Shadow Shaman and Witch Doctor. So we really want to get a good synergy with our units in the early game so we don't lose much. As you can see we're staying pretty healthy as now and even though there's this angry ogre and anti-mage running around. Now we were lucky enough to get a two-star juggernaut over here and because of that I'll be swapping units again. I'm prioritizing the Queen of Pain simply because she has some units and I wanted her for the early game so that I get some great AoE. She's positioned over here, I'm gonna pause for a moment, she's positioned over here simply because I'm taking her as a DPS damage dealer and a nuker for the front line, not really wanting her to jump to the back because she doesn't have any armor. So let me just have a look, let's have a look at this fight. And also, let me know on stream, guys, if everything's okay and we, if everything goes smoothly. Because previously we had some issues with the recording of sound and the display as well. So we're running into different players. This player is running Assassins. Currently, he doesn't have much Assassins, so it's okay. And yeah, we're winning the fight simply because we have two star units. Just as so saying this, we lost this one. Because the Assassins with the Critical and Bounty Hunter with the buff with one of the unit tanking for them is quite strong. Now, to stick with our troll strategy, we want the Ox to take us into the mid game, or even taking us from early game. We want the trolls for the troll synergy once we, got, we get our troll. And we want any early game DPS damage you can like Queen of Pain. But of course, my top priority is Shadow Fiend in terms of Demon. Simply because he's a Warlock, he does great damage with trolls, and he does great AoE. And he does not jump and run like Queen of Pain. So we're gonna fight dog. We're gonna fight the little mud golems. We're gonna be looking around. And one thing I want to mention in this build is that we're aiming to roll our units into three stars. And this is when we keep every bat rider we see. We keep every shadow shaman and every witch doctor. And sometimes we might even take them, even though we lose one gold of saving. Now we're gonna take that bat rider. We're still waiting for a second a third queen of pain for her to be two star and until so she's not as strong as you can see. And yes, we have the ox, but we're not winning all the fights and we're still losing health. But in comparison with just running chores or even with Abaddon, we're not losing that badly, and that's important. Here I'm selling units just for the saving, and anti mage is not part of our core build, so I sold him. Again, we're rolling and nothing special comes. And as you can see, I haven't, let me show you over here. There's something I did over here. So I haven't been winning. I have been losing for the past two rounds. I'm okay with another loss. So I sold my Queen of Pain to get her items out. I am looking at the second Queen of Pain because by having her sold as well, I'll actually be getting 30 gold. And knowing that I'll probably lose, I bought the anti-mage on the side. Just so there's so many demons early game. So we're going to be fighting, and in most cases we're losing right now. We're losing to most players simply because we are still running a troll lineup, and it's very weak early game until we get our fourth troll warlord. And we all know that feeling when the troll warlord comes. So what happens here is we will find our first shadow thing. Shadow thing is great. At this moment, I haven't been putting the Shadow Fiend to the corner, but the corner is over here. I like to put Shadow Fiend in the corner at rounds before round 20 or 25 even, if we have Disruptor. If we don't have the upper hand, I won't be putting it to the corner simply because we don't want to get a boat, we don't want to get a stone onto us and silence everything. 
As you can see, we're prioritizing savings, simply using the chores as a leverage, or simply using the ox as a leverage to get us into the late game, and the mid game until the chore comes. So, I noticed that I have two warriors. Simply having another warrior might help us in terms of survivability. But the problem is, I also want a shadow thing, so I really need to clean up a space here. And I'm going to go a little forward while I decide which one unit was important. It turns out it was the Lycan that I sold. I like it come back again and it kind of like taunted me saying, where's my friend? Now this is the thing that I want to note, that I made a mistake here, which was I prioritized the X instead of the Batrider. This was not the best decision I made because this is a troll orc build and X at two star is okay. At three star, it's not that impactful compared to Batrider because our core units are trolls. I did make this mistake out of habit because Batrider used to be my to go unit to sell first. And as you can see, it's a Shadow Shaman. So because I'm still unfamiliar with keeping all the units for the trolls after two star, so usually when I used to play a troll, I'm used to not keeping units after getting them to 2-star because it was so much harder to get them to 3-star. So we're fighting wolves here, and despite our lack of positioning, we're actually doing quite well. And we got some of these items, which is a very nice surprise. So here, we also missed the Shadow Shaman, which I want to highlight. This, again, didn't go well with our well, purpose of getting all units to 3-star. But just bear with me because I think not keeping all the early units also shows you how powerful this build can be in the late game when we actually find the three star units eventually. So here I started keeping bat riders again, even though I sold him the first time. So winning because we have a two star shadow thing. And he has great AoE. Okay, let's go back here. He has great AoE and some nice fist single target damage. So here, this is the first round that I wanted to roll. Two reasons I'm rolling here. One is that right now we have a decent decent rate for the trolls. So in comparison with level six and level five, uh, in comparison with level six and level five, we're looking at 2% to 7%. So rolling at level six is quite nice. And in comparison to level seven, we're looking at 10%. We are only gaining 3%. So rolling at level 6, actually we have a better 1-star rate, which is very nice if we want the Bat Riders to be 3-star. And the Shadow Shaman, that is. The moment I get my trolls, I'm going to put my troll lineup, and all of a sudden we're looking at a quite decent solid lineup with only 6 units. Now, I have to say this was a very lucky troll roll at round 17. We could have been better, or could have been worse, but this is definitely a nice roll. So anytime with a troll build that we get a troll before round 20, it is very nice. So here, as you can see, this is the formation I was discussing earlier. We get a Witch Doctor Shadow Fiend in the back. They really do some good damage as the enemy jumps into us. And we do some great nuke damage and the coconut's gonna bounce. Although we're losing now, I'm quite confident that very soon we will be winning. So here, as you can see, we're round 18 after this round and we're looking at about 61 percent i think most of my previous troll rounds i'm looking at 50 percent sometimes lucky if i'm 60 percent sometimes not lucky i'm looking at 44 percent simply because i was trying to get abaddons i was trying to get a necro i was trying to get units that synergize as well with us mid game but that's quite weak in early game until we get a key piece of troll wall up now because let's have a look at the rows here we got a Beastmaster, and we have been waiting for our third Beastmaster. Having the Beastmaster means now I have... Let's, I'm going to pause here. Having the Beastmaster means now I have two two-star units sitting on the bench. So this is one of the times I want to be leveling up. So I leveled up to level 7. I have two Orcs synergy. And I think Axe in comparison to Juggernaut. Juggernaut is better than the Axe. But I only wanted the Axe for survivability. It's because I know my lineup will do enough damage. I think very soon I might swap them, but I might keep both. Just so if I get a Disruptor, I have four Orcs. So we're going to win the fights now, simply because we have additional unit. 
and we have the trust synergy with a two star shadow thing. So over here, as you can see, I am, let me show you the actual rows. So I got another shadow thing and we also have some enchanters saved up to make some spare change. So at level seven, this is the time that I might be wanted to be rolling and I might want to be rolling at level eight. There's a little preference over here. Learning at level seven will give us a higher chance of getting one star units and also two star units. Rolling at level eight opens up legendaries and also increase the chance of purple unit. But the fact is, as you can see, I'm even looking at the rates over here myself to remind myself when I should be rolling. The fact is, I want the early game units. I want to see a three star bat rider and I want to see a three star shadow shaman because he works really well when we get an instant hex with disruptor. So I'm going to be collecting units when I'm collecting a chores and ox and also Abaddon because if we get a necro, we get our three warlocks. Now I'm going to be cleaning up some units and cleaning up more units. As you can see, I'm rolling at level seven right now instead of going to level eight. Despite the fact we have another two star waiting. This is simply because it is better to be rolling early for the one star units than rolling late. I've seen so many people, even myself, rolling at level 10 to look for one simple unit, say a bounty hunter or a tinker, and we never find it because when you get to higher level, it's so hard to be rolling for lower tier units. And we get stuck with a two star tinker, a two star bounty hunter for almost the entire game. Not saying those units would make that much impact at, in the late game, but having every unit, every core unit to three star is really nice. Here we saw a juggernaut, and we're going to ignore the juggernaut, but we're going to take the necro, simply because the necro actually activates lifesteal for us. But the problem being, having the necro means we need another slot, and this is when we level up. See, I'm I have little preference in terms of saving, but rather what are the crucial units I needed at what time. So yes, I was lucky enough so the gold compared to XP was right on the 4 multiplier, so we didn't waste additional 5 gold, but at the same time I was okay to be staying on level 7 to roll for my units that I needed. So right now we're looking at 2 Bat Rider, 2 X, 2 Beastmaster and 1 Witch Doctor which is not the best rows, but it's still acceptable. And even though we got to level eight, we're still losing to the very powerful elves and druids at this stage. So this was not one of those all convincing victories, but rather we have to work slowly forward to it. So Batriders, we found another Batrider, which is very nice. So right now we're looking for three Batriders and lots of Ox. I'm going to give most of my good items to my troll and I tend to give magic item to shadow thing because whoever he's hitting usually get hit by his his ultimate as well so I usually just give magic item to shadow thing because I have a troll that is carrying in terms of physical damage so right now the crucial unit I'm looking is a disruptor simply because having the disruptor I can replace one of my ox likely to be X and having the disruptor gives us an instant hex with the two star shadow thing. So until I get my disruptor, I don't think I'll be going to level nine. Here we're rolling again. We're keeping the alchemist simply because the moment we get a two star alchemist, or even when we have a synergy with the undead that's not have activated, we can swap the alchemist with necro. Right now I'm keeping the necro simply for the heals. But if later on I get an alchemist again, I might be swapping the alchemist with the necro because we don't have an as undead at this point. Well, first in players, half of the players we can win, the other half we lose terribly compared to the other players. And those are the players that run elves and druids at this point. As you can see, my gold is not that high, simply because I have been rolling for units and I've been keeping random units to reduce the rates, or to increase the rates of the units I want to. We see a long druid. Usually long druid is very nice, but for this case, we can't fit the long druid simply because we need the chores, we need the warlocks, and also we need the units we need. As you can see, I'm keeping the Abaddon simply because once Necro gets to two star, 
we can swap the Abaddon and Ekring for the minus 5 armor with Undead. Another way of having the 3 Warlock over here is this. So I'm looking at my Warlocks right now. Another way of having the Warlocks is not to have a Shadow thing, but rather have the Alchemist, the Undead, and have the Witch Doctor. This means we will be taking one of our Ox off, taking the Shadow thing off, and having the Undead. I'm preferring the Shadow thing for this case simply because he is a 2 star and Shadow thing does a lot of damage first. As you can see over here. Now, in the cases when everyone's taking a shadow thing, then it's advisable that we don't go into taking a shadow thing and trying to get him to two star and just take the undead and take the alchemist. Because surprisingly enough, when you stack the minus armor, you do a lot of physical damage. So here we're versing other players, and as I was saying, half the time we win, half the time we lose. Which is okay. And I sold the Lone Druid just for the saving, because I know I don't have space for the Lone Druid. Shadow Shaman and Bat Rider. Excellent. So we're going to be staying on level 8 for a while, just to roll for our units. We got another Beastmaster. Very nice. Another Beastmaster. So very soon I'll be running off slots, and the top units I'll be looking at to sell are Necros and Abaddon, simply because I value the ox energy at this point. So we're fighting other players, also neutral monsters. We're rolling with most of our spare gold from the saving. Now this is very similar, as you can see. I consider the possibility of I'm going to pause over here. I consider the possibility of keeping the axe, but I feel that he's falling off very rapidly. And after level twenty-five, it's pretty much he's very irrelevant. I think another round of AOE from the Beastmaster might be beneficial for me right now. We're rolling for units. This is very similar to the rolling for units for the... Oh, this is one of the excellent tier rolls, I have to say. So we found the Beastmaster after about 10 or 20 rolls. So we spent about 30 to 40 gold rolling, and we managed to find our last Beastmaster for 3-star Beastmaster, which is very lucky. But this is very similar to a goblin build where when we're rolling for three star units of goblins. Here we're rolling for three star units for the chores. And Beastmaster is one of our core units that we'll be keeping for the late game. Simply because he activates. Oh, this is very sad. I should have been dive. Just so close. And here. Simply because we want the Beastmaster and we want the Disruptor. Now, I locked in for the Beastmaster because I'm still uncertain if I want the Necro. I want to see if the Necro can be 2-star first, so I can replace the Alchemist with him, because he's so close to 2-star. I'm keeping the Necro simply because I know in the endgame, a Lich would be a great addition to my team. Now we're fighting other players, and this 3-star Beastmaster with Lifesteal is doing a lot of work for us. And also a Charles is disabling them in the backline. And this was actually, let me go back first, this is a goblin player that we're facing right now. And he managed to get all of his goblins and one to start Terrorblade. We're going to see some very nice fights with the goblin player and some very nice Terrorblade very soon. Because he just got his techies set this early in the game and he can build into whatever he wants with plenty of saving from this stage. Again, we're rolling. I saw the Abaddon again in favor of the Bat Rider because we just need one more Bat Rider. We're fighting and we're winning because of our unit synergy and because of 3 star Beastmaster. Alchemist is very underrated in this case simply because the Alchemist reduced armor is so strong. And here, this is the point I feel that I can take the Alchemist out because our Necro just got to 2 star. And a 2-star Necro can be surprisingly strong with his heals. He has a really low cooldown, and the heals can be just what we need to keep our units alive, so for them to lifesteal. And also, it opens up me up for the late game potential of having the Lich on the board. That's my 10th unit. Now we are fighting. We have the 3-star Beastmaster to damage and tank for us. We have the Disruptor to start the instant hex. I have my Disruptor in the back because he's level 1, and once he's level 2, he's definitely going to the front because he also has the Orc buff for more HP. We see a Gyro, and usually this will be very nice for me, 
but this time I'm gonna pass on him simply because we don't have any room and as you can see I am still rolling at level 30 and we found most of our units by this time we have a three-star Beastmaster three-star Batrider and a three-star Shadow Shaman this is some nice RNG but we did spend a majority of savings rolling and people are saying me saying it's a three-star terror blade I'm not too scared because right now I have some great stuff three star units as well and I'm looking forward to get to level nine with three three stars look at this terror blade though so crazy so much attack speed and 440 damage plus the pure damage he basically shreds everything <laughs> looking at it because it's so rare to see the Archangel Terror Blade as 3 star and previously he dies so fast once he gets enough mana now with a new buff he swap health with the ally and he becomes incredibly good and remember I mentioned about having the power spike having the power spike means after a neutral round you usually want a power spike and this is what i did i leveled up to level nine for additional unit now one thing i want to highlight over here is this templar assassin was not a random roll although we did get the templar assassin the templar assassin is actually our ninth unit for this troll build two reasons why we have the templar assassin one is that troll gives attack speed and lifesteal and this works well with the templar assassin second thing is our troll build needs time to cast our spells off because we are attacking really fast and we need time to get the shadow shaman witch doctor disruptor shadow thing to get all these spells off having the templar assassin that jumps to the back distracts the enemy and gives us this window to attack the enemy and get our spells off this i have to say this was not made by me as a strategy but rather this was made by the top 10 players in the world and i read through his replays and it turns out Templar Assassin was one of his ninth unit as well and very nicely as you can see we're actually sitting quite high in terms of health at this stage of the game simply because every other player kind of countered each other and we are actually surviving against most of the players this is in the front with the goblin and we got stoned real hard and but look over here we distracted two units with one single unit and we're gonna lose this fight because this terror blade is no joke and just as i was saying we're sitting on pretty nice health we just lost a chunk of health which is okay we still have savings and we still have the end game in our mind because two things after losing to this terror blade i noticed that maybe my arrangement of this ball formation is no longer feasible and very soon after this frantic row i'll be swapping my arrangements we found another Templar and here I was shot of gold so it was a frantic sale of a random unit turns out it was a Dusa and we didn't get time to rearrange our formation usually at this time we want to rearrange your formations because we don't have a two-star disruptor if I had a two-star disruptor I can still in this form but notice how this form is so strong by baiting units in while the Templar jumps to the back so let me show you over here so we're gonna start this fight this is the usual formation people also take around this time in the game simply because they have a dragon knight or they have a draw a, a hunter lineup or any other lineup they like to take this formation as well having the templar will distract most of the unit well we'll single out any unit that jumps into us so any unit that jumps into us will be focused fired and let's have a look over here alchemist died in an instant and over here a unit was instantly hexed well they were distracted by the templar we got most of our spells off and we won this fight almost too easy now a reason for me to be so strong in this late to mid game is simply because i have three three star units although i'm lacking on a two star troll and a two star disruptor i'm still winning oh i'm still winning most of my fights i should say I'm not winning all of the fights because it's a three-star terror blade. Oh, yeah. So here we finally found our second disruptor, and I'm looking at my units. The reason I want to keep the Enigma is that it is a warlock, and also it can help me versus the bosses. I'm gonna let the alchemist go right now. I'm frantically looking for my last disruptor, and I'm even inclined to sell this tide 
if I don't see my disruptor soon because my health is also falling dangerously low. But running a troll build at this stage of the game is that we have the safe mind that most other players can't defeat us. We might lose to an unlucky stun with a Tide or a Dusa, but most other players can't defeat us. And I'm also staying in this ball form because there's still assassins running around, as you can see. And having a Templar as our ninth unit actually gives us great chances to be winning little skirmish like this one. And this 3 star Shadow Shaman is carrying us as well. I'm gonna go a little forward, and as you know, I'm desperately rolling for Disruptor this time, not Techies. And of course, Techie comes when I'm desperate for anything else but Techies. So, as you can see, it's the same formation again, and it will be the same Dragon player. And the same thing will likely gonna happen. Templar's gonna jump to the back, we're gonna distract them, and we're gonna single out one unit, which all of our units are focusing. Here, Templar only distract one unit, now it's two unit, one is a chicken. But we did get most of our spells off. Now, although, as you can see, our troll ball lost most of the fight, we still had a Templar to clean up most of the units. And although we lost this fight, we didn't lose that badly. And I have to say, the human buff is just ridiculous when you silence the enemy, because most of my frontline always get silenced right off the game. We're looking for the disruptor we need. And this is a round, this is a boss round. And this is when we replace the Necro with an Enigma. I'm keeping the Enigma simply for the benefits of doing pure damage to the neutral monsters. They have so much HP that pure damage over 10 seconds does a lot for us. So yeah, here we're fighting the dragon. And we have the instant hex. We have the shadow shaman hex. So likely, unless the dragon kills everything before they hex him, we'll win the fight. And of course now I'm looking for the disruptor. And techics keeps coming over. So a little thing here I did is that let me show you. Although it didn't work as intentional. A little thing here I did I have six gold. I'm gonna buy this purple unit regardless what it is. I don't intend on keeping it, but I want to roll with a higher chance of any other purple unit by removing one from the pool. This is very minimal, maybe increase our chance by about one or less than one percent. But still, anything works. Anything that works, I'll try it in this type of game because RNG really matter, and we want anything that helps us with RNG. So, two reasons I'm swapping the Necro. One is that we don't have the last undead as a lich, and we're fighting goblins. We really don't want the goblins to be super tanky, and we really don't want them to be outlasting us. So, Enigma in this case is better. We don't want to be surviving, we want to be doing pure damage to them. So Necro is for surviving, our backline to survive, and Enigma is offensive. Notice how my formation has changed a little bit now that I have a 2 star Disruptor. I'm putting the Shadow Shaman and the Disruptor to the front, so Shadow Shaman gets more energy and gets a Hex off, while Disruptor will be our initiate. Disruptor will be silencing the enemy for 3 seconds and doing 600 damage over the time. So, very nice. And here, Shadow Shaman already hexed one. So we got two units hexed and everyone silenced. And this person was also true. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at his positioning as well. So I'm going to pause over here. So notice how he's running chores with knights. Chores with knights are nice, but there's one problem. He has too many knights. He needs at least four knights for this to be effective. That means he doesn't have enough of the stuns and CCs that we have. And what happens is he gets silenced. Most of his units are not going to do much, and then he loses. Notice how we only have a one-star troll. The troll is simply to activate the buff for everyone. And despite the nerf during the last patch, the trolls are still very strong. And as you can see, we won massively on this play as well. Let me have let me try over here. This player had 19 health and he died because our trolls. And it just happens we ended the game coincidentally by two players killing each other and we killed the second player when he's on 19 health. So this is the end of the game, but I'm gonna summarize this entire build with us. So to start the troll build, we want ox for the early game. We can take a warrior, so we have three warrior and two rock. And that's what I did for a bit of the early game. This is to help us stay 
healthy enough with our HP and save enough gold because elks are so easy to get in early game. Not that easy if you're that unlucky, but most of the time we can get a two star axe and we can get a two star juggernaut or a two star beastmaster, and those can be interchangeable. We do want to keep most of our chores. I did make the mistake of selling a few bad riders early game because it was a force of habit. But I do want to keep most of my chores. So let me show you when the game actually starts for us to be rolling. So this was a quite short game as well in comparison to most other games. Some games last around 40. Let me show you. We have started rolling at level 7. And because we rolled into a troll warlord, we stopped rolling at level 7. This is a personal preference because I want to keep a bit of health. You can still roll for the bat riders if you're still healthy in terms of health and shadow shaman because there's a higher rate at 30% at this level. But because I want to save a bit of health, I went up to level 8 very soon. So after level 21, we got to level 8. And this is the similar timing with our goblins. But usually our goblins, we still have 50 gold over here. We're looking at 33 gold. This is fine because with trolls, having any extra unit on the board makes us so much stronger because if we all survive, we do great damage. What's going to happen from now, from round 21 to round 30, similar to the Goblin Guide, we're going to be rolling units into three stars. I'm going to fast forward. As you can see, we're still waiting for the units and at round 26 is when we find our first 3 star. This is not that fast because we have been spending 5 rounds rolling for them. And we didn't have time to put them out because of the lag. And over here, we're rolling again at round 27. We're rolling just so we hit the 50 gold mark because we don't want to spend the under unless our HP becomes threatening. What one I feel threatening is that one go below 40% at this point. So I'm going to show you the time mark. So over here, we managed to find the other three stars, the three stars we needed at round 29. So what happened is from round 21 to round 29, we have been rolling and we were lucky enough to find three, three stars. I know that it's quite hard to get the witch doctor to three star. So this is when I decide to be leveling up. Actually, we didn't get it until the next round, actually. Yeah, so round 30 is when we found all of our three stars, as you can see on the screen. Bat Riders, Shadow Shaman, and the Beastmaster. This makes our trolls so much stronger, because not all units are tanky, they also do more damage, and they also stun for longer. Now, we do want to be going to level 9, not only because we lost, also because after we found most of our units, we want to be on level 9. And on level 9, I want to emphasize here, a 2-star Templar Assassin is my to-go unit. So, yes, I also wanted to show over here. Because I'm running a troll build, and because I'm not used to having Templar Assassins, I actually rolled out of one right now, and I was actually kicking myself for it. So you see the Templar? I completely ignored it, because in my mind, I want a Disruptor. And although Disruptor did come in, I missed a Templar. But, you know, luckily enough, next time we did get a Templar. So after getting the Templar to 2 star, we become much, much stronger. And yeah, did I just miss the Templar again? No, no, we got a 2 star Templar over there, that's why. So yeah, to summarize, this build doesn't require us to get to level 10 with the troll. And this build doesn't require us to be losing that hard early game. So there's two achievements with this build. One is that we have Ox to carry us into the mid game. Second is we have three star units to carry us in the late game. And trolls with three star units and a two star disruptor is almost unstoppable because of the instant hex. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully this guide helps everyone with the games in any rank level. And I find it really helpful even at higher rook levels to be using this build. So thank you for watching and let me try to find an end game first. Oh, we didn't find one. So thank you for watching and please like and subscribe to my videos. This really encouraged me to do future videos. And again, thank you for being a part of my YouTube journey. So see you guys next time.